So in my last week's video, I showed a picture of two different switches. One is the new Kalebox White V2 switches, and the other is the Arctic Fox switches. If you haven't seen that review, I highly encourage you guys to watch it because in my opinion, they are some of the best clicky switches I tried. But anyways, back to the subject of this video, I've been using these switches for a good amount of time now, and my conclusion to this is that they're some of the most unique sounding click bar switches I tried. Clicky gang! Hey everyone, this is Lasico and today we'll be checking out this thing here. This is the Arctic Fox switches from Cosfox and Kale. So let's go check them out if they're really good or not. So this switches has been sent by Cosfox for free, so this is a sponsored video. But keep in mind that they didn't told me anything what to say in the video, so this is completely unbiased. And I will point out flaws if there are any. Also if you use the code FLUFFY10 on their checkout, you will get a $10 off if you order anything from them that's over $60. So links of their website and their Discord server in the description below. And enough of that, let's get into the video! So this switch is cost around 65 cents per switch, which is considered to be a mid-budget switch. Both the top and bottom housing is color blue and it's made out of polycarbonate material. Stem is made out of POM, like what you see from other box switches out there. There's a little bit of lube on the railing and on the bottom housing where the springs are met. Keep in mind that they lube the bottom housing pretty sparsely, so you might need to re-lube them. That way, there will be no more spring ping and no more rattle. You can also lube the railings too if you want as well. Now let's check the specification of these switches. So they have an actuation distance of 1.7mm and a total travel distance of 3.6mm, which is very usable for gaming and general use. It has an operating force of 52 grams, and it's a 20 mm long spring switch. But unlike the Kale Box White V2 switches, this switch uses a stainless steel long spring rather than a golden long spring. So they last for a shorter amount of time due to corrosion. But that corrosion will take a few decades to form, so you don't have to be worried about it. It is also a 5 pin switch, so it's more stable and it's compatible with plate disc builds. It also has a light bar diffuser in the front of the switch, so that it spreads the light evenly for people who wants to have backlighting on their keyboard. However, because of this, it's only compatible with SMD LEDs and not compatible with diode style LEDs. There will be some interference when you're using cherry profile switches and this applies to both north and south facing boards. So I'd stay away from GMK keycaps or any other cherry profile keycaps when using the switches. Since we covered the specification and information about these Arctic Fox switches, let's compare them to the Box White V1 switches and the Cateron Pro Milky Yellows. So here's the sound test. So, what do I think of these switches? Well, I think they're like the most unique click bar box switches I ever tried. This is most likely because it's using a polycarbonate bottom housing rather than a typical nylon bottom housing like what you see from any other box switches out there. The feel of it is pretty nice as well. It's moderately tactile and it's comparable to the box pink switches. And even though Arctic Fox switches is slightly lighter than a box pink switches, they feel somewhat similar to one another because of the long spring. When playing rhythm games with it, 
they feel a bit heavier than what I prefer, so it's not really good for rhythm games. But I can see this switch as I used to gain stamina when playing rhythm games like Eterna and Osomania. Typing wise, they feel really good as well. I've been typing my script for this video with these switches and the unique sound gives out a pretty nice feedback. There's a minimal scratchiness to it but it's something that you won't get bothered when typing on it. If you guys want to get rid of the scratchiness and spring ping from the switches, then there's a video on how to loop clicky switches properly, so go check them out if you guys are interested. So overall, what do I think about these switches? Well, the unique sound alone already makes me want to recommend you guys to try these switches out because they're actually really good in my opinion. They're a bit loud though, and it's probably the second loudest switch I've owned. So if you don't want anyone in your household or your co-workers to get annoyed by your keyboard, then I probably won't recommend buying the switches and get something that's a bit quieter that's still a clicky switch, such as a Box White V2 switches. Also, there's something that I would like to say and there's an issue in terms of quality control. So when I got 70 of the switches from Cosfox to review, 20 of the 70 switches I got has a light bar diffuser that's not shaved off and look more square and because of this, there will be a pretty bad interference regardless of which facing the keyboard mounts and what profile your keycap uses, which resulted a keycaps getting stuck to the switch while being pressed. So I contact Cosfox about the issue in their Discord server, and apparently I was the only person so far from anyone that we know of who got the Arctic Fox switches that has this quality control issue. So it's pretty unlikely that you will get the same issue as what I have here. But just in case that you did receive a defective switch, there are two ways to solve this issue. If you don't care about RGB lighting or backlighting, you can always remove the light bar diffuser but you have to keep in mind that the sound profile may change and you have to be careful when removing the switch when it's mounted because you can damage the click bar within the process. Another is to open up the switch, grab the light bar diffuser, sand the corner of it with a sandpaper. I suggest to start off with a moderate grit and then move to a really fine one so that the diffuser will still look perfect when you finish sanding it. And that's how you fix your Arctic Fox switches. And that's it for the video. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you guys find this video helpful or entertaining. Leave a comment down below or feedback if you guys have any questions or anything um, that what, what you can say with this video. And leave a dislike as well if you guys find this video very distasteful or anything that I said that's really wrong. And yeah, so to end this video off, here's a sound difference with this Arctic Fox switches on this modded Keychron Q1 with polycarbonate plate and Aqua Waves keycaps. And as always, thanks for watching!